Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 11.1. We're going to define reaction rate and state the unit. We're going to identify the rate and time as being inversely related. We're going to explain why the rate of reaction cannot be defined as the amount of time. It's not time. Give the three parts of the collision theory and discuss how collision theory explains the rates. List the factors scientists can manipulate to control the rate. Define the reaction mechanism and the rate determining step. Determine the nature of the reactants. Talk about energy diagrams, and we're going to talk about humps. Disorder and heat drive spontaneity. So let's hop right to it. Four iron plus three oxygen make two iron three oxide. If four moles of iron react, hey, look at the four. How many moles of oxygen react? Hey, that's three moles of oxygen. If two moles of iron three oxide, oh, look, form per minute. Hey, you added per minute. How many moles of oxygen disappear per minute? So again, this is two. So this would be three moles per minute. Hey. If oxygen disappears at five moles a minute, oh, now it's or min two. Um, to make this a little bit more standard, five moles of oxygen a minute. What is the rate of change for iron? So then I have three moles of oxygen and four moles of iron. So moles of oxygen cancel, and I would end up with 20 thirds, whatever that is, moles of Fe per minute. Notice how that minute's still there? It's still there. That's what makes it time, not mere per minute. Okay. Um, same deal for iron 3 oxide. I'm going to do that in here. Hopefully you'll do it below that. Um, 5 moles of O2 per minute. And if I'm doing iron 3 oxide, 3 moles of O2 make 2 moles of Fe2O3. And that would give me 10 thirds moles of Fe2O3 per minute. And that's three and a third. We should just put 3.33. 3.33. And that is 6.67. Not math class. Rate is measured in change of concentration, 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 concentration per time unit. Okay? So our concentration unit we're always going to use is molarity. Hey, we did that last chapter. Per minute. How does rate compare to time? Run to class. So if I am Julia, Julie, and I run fast, if I run fast, or rast, if I run fast, then my time to get there is small. So if my speed goes up, as rate goes up, as I run faster, my time to get somewhere goes down. Okay? So as rate goes up, time goes down. Those are opposites. That's called an inverse. What if I go very, very, very slowly? Right? Nicole is always the last one done with the lab. Nicole, rate low. That means the time is big. Again, it's inversely related. Collision theory. In order for a reaction to be successful, particles must collide with enough energy and the right orientation. Okay, so I think of it like a home run. A thing we did in class is talking about a home run. You can't swing and miss to have a home run happen. It's got to have enough energy. It's got to have enough energy to go and go and go and go and go. It's got to have enough energy to clear the wall, right? And the right orientation. It can't hit a foul ball. Oh, wah, wah, wah. Or it can't hit a ground ball. Dribble, dribble, dribble. Okay. All reactions must collide with enough energy in the right orientation. All reactions do this, even decomposition reactions. Several possible orientations for a collision between two Brno molecules. Okay, So if my products are supposed to be Br2, so and then two NOs, see how if this collides, these two can stick? Boink! No! Boink! No! That would be a good orientation. This one, oh look, they can collide. 
boink, no, boink, no. This one, if they hit like this, there's no way you can get these two BRs to connect. So that would be no reaction. Now this is a very, very, very simple mechanism for it. But remember, they don't just hit at 90 degree angles. They can hit, oh look, it's a snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? It doesn't have to be a snowman. It can be bromine, nitrogen, oxygen. If these hit like this, it will not have the right orientation to do it. Or if it hits, if this snowman was like this and they hit like that, it won't do it. So there's a bunch more wrong ways than right ways. Success rate is low. Imagine putting pen caps and pens in a box and looking to see how many caps fit on the pen by shaking the box. Here's my box. Here's my pen. Here's my cap. Oh. Whoa, I missed. Here's my cap. And if I just put it in a box and shake, 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 shake. Some of you would say it would never happen. Some of you might say it will almost never happen, but it is really, 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 really hard because this pen is not trying to get in here. It's not going, man, you know what? I'm going to join it. It's not trying. And even if it was, it wouldn't matter. Just the energy of doing this. And see how I lined it up like this? Well, what if I had my pen like this? Well, now I'm really out of luck, right? You have to keep shaking it until it happens. Success rate is low, okay? So it's not going to happen very often if you're trying to get it to work there. So, pen caps and pens in a box, looking to see how many caps fit on the pen by shaking the box. Not many. We can change the rate of the reaction. If we increase temperature, we increase the energy, so we get more successful collisions. Remember, we're trying to get successful collisions. And temperature is pretty cool, because if we increase the temperature, we also increase the number of collisions. So it doesn't mean the collisions will be any better. It just means there'll be more of them. So pretend that Alex is trying to get a date. So if Alex is trying to get a date, if he asks a million girls, chances are one of them will say yes. Well, maybe that's a bad example. But anyway, but now what if he increases the energy that he has? We'll say his energy is money. He goes out, gets jobs, has a million bucks, and then he says, you want to go out with me? And some said, so we'll probably still say no, but then maybe two in a million because he has more energy. Concentration. So if I increase the concentration, which is molarity, increase concentration, you increase the rate. Why? Because there will be more collisions. So if Alex is trying to get a date, maybe when he goes to college, he'll go to an all-girls college. That way he'll have a better chance. There'll be more collisions for him to bump into girls to date. Surface area. The surface area, so if I increase the surface area, you do that by grinding it up. So if you grind it up, you increase the rate, again, because there will be more collisions. If I use a catalyst, a catalyst will increase the rate because it lowers energy needed. A catalyst just lowers the energy needed. So that's basically where Alex finds girls that will date anything, anything at all. Right now, you know, they spend their time sitting at home talking to Furbies, and Alex says, you want to go out with me? And they say, ah, well, let me get back to you. Yes. Um, an inhibitor decreases the rate because it increases the energy needed. These are the girls that have high standards that Alex really has no shot for. Reactions occur in steps. Okay, so this new topic, new topic. Reactions occur in step like baking a cake. If I were to list the steps of baking a cake, I would say make batter, bake it, and frost it. Okay. The rate determining step is the slowest step and determines the, and controls the rate. So if I'm making the batter, let's say that takes three minutes. If I want to bake it, it takes, I don't know, 20 minutes. If I want to frost it, it takes two minutes. So now if I had to make a thousand cakes, um, and I have one oven, or I have five ovens, my rate determining step of cake making is baking, right? Because if I'm making, whoops, I could spell baking, um, if I'm making a thousand of these cakes, 
then what happens is I can make the batter, start baking one, make a bunch of batter, make a bunch of batter, make a bunch of batter, and I'm sitting around waiting for that slowest step to take place. I can't frost them until they're all baked. So if I want to speed up the rate, I would speed up the rate determining step. So if I had some way where I could bake a cake in 10 minutes, it would go a lot faster. But if I found a way to make batter in two minutes, that's not going to help me a noticeable amount. Nature of reactants. This refers to the complexity of the molecules. It can make a reaction slower or faster. This is complex. If I want to build a house, it is easier to build a house out of Lincoln logs because they're simple than it is out of that thing because it's complex. So complex would be slow and difficult and simple and fast. Delta H, hey, another new topic. Delta H is enthalpy. It's basically heat. I say H stands for heat. If heat is on the left, it's absorbing heat and it's endothermic. And it absorbs heat. We've done this before, but we've forgotten it. If heat is on the right, it is exothermic. Exo means out and releases heat. If it feels cold, that it's taking our heat. If it feels cold, it is endothermic because it is absorbing your heat. Boiling water, if I'm going from a liquid to a gas, I need to absorb energy for that. So even though it's hot, it's going to be endothermic. It absorbs heat. Okay. Energy diagram. So an energy diagram looks like this. It has a hump. This is the energy. This is time or reaction progress. Your reactants are right here at the beginning. Your products are right here at the end. The transition state is at the top of the humps. The humps, the humps, the lovely lady humps. Check it out. That's the transition state. Your activation energy is the energy from the reactants up to the product. So this is my transition state. This arrow right here is my activation energy. E little a. Delta H is the difference between my reactants and my products. And then is this endothermic or exothermic? Well, look, reactants have, to say this is 100, products have 20. It's going to lose heat. Heat is coming out. It's exothermic because products are lower than reactants. I hope the next one lets me draw an endothermic one. Nope, it doesn't. So now I've got to redraw this. So don't erase yours. This is an exothermic. I'm going to draw an endothermic one now. Endothermic, same deal, start with reactants and with products. This arrow is my activation energy. This peak of the hill is my transition state. And delta H, again, is the energy from reactants to products. So reactants, products, transition state, activation energy, delta H, and this one is endothermic because heat goes into the reactants to get to the products. Fast or slow? If I have a reaction that's like this, this hill slows me down. So if I add a catalyst, chugga, 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 chugga. That is a catalyst, and it gives you a shorter pathway. And it makes it faster. If I had something that would da-dump, 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 it should just make it really, really big. This would be an inhibitor. It makes the hill taller, which would make my reaction slower. Both endothermic and exothermics can have these, right? Catalyst, shorter, taller. Okay. So the size of the humps determines the speed. Bonds breaking absorb energy. So remember, if I'm going to break your bone, here's your femur. 
If I'm going to break your bone, I have to put energy into it to snap it. Ouch! So when you break something, breaking bonds absorb energy. You absorb energy into the bone and it breaks. Bonds forming release energy. Break, absorb, release, form. We've heard that a bunch of times. Break, absorb, release, form. Remember that by barf. If energy of formation is more, forming releases. If the reaction is exothermic, it releases more. If energy of breaking is more, the reaction is endothermic, it absorbs more. Yeah. Energy diagrams in terms of bonds. Break. Break it down. Form. Form is like falling. So you're breaking, you're going up the hill, you're forming, you're going down the hill. Exothermic is favored in nature. Lower energy is favored. Lower energy is favored. Higher energy is high stress. Where would you rather live? Nice, calm water or here? This is great. It's a bye. We're all going to die. So low energy is favored. Disorder is favored in nature. That's also called a mess. It's also called chaos. Do buildings build themselves? No. Do things fall apart? Yes. Hey, that's more disorder. Do papers write themselves? No. Okay. Does this happen on its own? Uh, I suppose. Review. Rate is measured in molarity over time. Time is the opposite of rate. Home run derby is collision theory. Reaction occurs in steps. The slowest step is rate determining. Complex shapes slow down reactions. And you should know about the humps of this. Toodles.